just to give you a sense of this, in the beginning, um, it was very hard to get these high resolution pictures. In fact, there were probably only five people in the world who were willing to struggle through the stuff that we did um, to get there. And what you did is to collect all these short exposures and put them together with a computer to figure out what, what was atmosphere and what was not and get the high detailed information. So on the left, we sh I'm showing you a, a, a stream of images taken in a single evening. I'm going to turn this off, hopefully, so it won't con um, confuse the issue. And I'm going to look at only this region and um, show you what we see here. So this is the sort of what's called a speckle imaging. It's what I like to call poor man's adaptive optics because it doesn't cost a lot of money in hardware. It's just blood and sweat um, that it costs. Um, and for the first decade of this experiment, that's what we did. But the key is that you actually discover that there are stars there. You probably could see that in the animation of AO on and adaptive optics on and adaptive optics off. Before, without this technique, you couldn't tell that there were stars there. And these are the stars that you want to measure. These are the stars that you want to watch go around what you think may or may not be the black hole and its motion, in particular, this star. You know, in LA, people have a lot of favorite stars. This is my favorite star. <laughs> its name is SO2. Um, it goes around the center of the galaxy every 15 years. Um, uh, and, and these images were wonderful. But today, I have to say, it's like looking at old home black and white movies. It's kind of quaint compared to what we can do today. What we can do today has um, radically changed thanks to uh, declassification <laughs> of military secrets. Because of the course, the astronomers were thinking, OK, there's got to be a better solution than taking all these short exposures. I've got to be able to figure out how to do this in hardware. In other words, to build an instrument that will take out or make still what the atmosphere is doing. The and the military, as you might imagine, also cares about looking through the atmosphere, both up and down. <laughs> And so they're very good at this. So as we started to make progress in the ast astronomical community, they finally said, fine, we're not paying you guys anymore to do this because we know the answer. Um, so that happened in um, the early 90s. So in the early 90s, there was a huge uh, effort. Actually, it was mid-90s. There was a huge effort to um, bring, to port over this technology from the military into um, the astronomical community. And this is a really nice animation. Um, depicting how this technology works. So you've seen the light come into the telescope. And it's going into an instrument. And miraculously, all the walls disappear, <laughs> because you see the instrument that's mounted behind the telescope. And it's important to remember that while you want a mirror that moves, the primary mirror, the one that's really big, is hard to move around fast. And that's why you, you, um, you make an instrument where you image the light on, um, onto a much smaller uh, mirror that you can move around. So this is the mirror that we're going to move around. So the infrared light goes to our camera, and you're going to see the bug splats. This is the awful stuff that the, the atmosphere does to us. But if we turn our adaptive optics system on, so what you're going to see is um, light depicted as pancakes. If there was no atmosphere, they would be flat. But they're potato chips. Think Pringle, uh, Pringles. <laughs> OK, so they, they're going into the camera. But now we're going to send it back to some analysis system, which is hidden. It's going to tell us how to change the shape of this mirror to, to flatten the pancakes out, or the potato chips out, and make them pancakes. Um, this is equivalent to taking out the distortions from the Earth's atmosphere. And then, instead of seeing this, we're going to see something very tight. This, um, it doesn't fully represent um, actually what, what's happening because it's fa an improvement in a factor of 20. But nonetheless, it gives you conceptually the idea that you have some wiggling mirror that undoes the effects of the atmosphere. 